Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wiley Drake, and it is my privilege to serve you as your chaplain. Operation American Spring is alive and well. We're on the ground, boots on the ground, prayer in the air. We're standing right now, as you can see down the way there, there's the Capitol building. The Capitol dome that sticks up there, that is not a secular symbol. That was designed based on the Bible, the helmet of salvation. That's what that represents. We're standing at the base now of the great Washington Monument. There are people gathering here today. They gathered yesterday. The drive-by media, as Rush calls them, reported a few dozen people were here. I've been coming to D.C. for 20 years. I've looked at crowds. I laid on my face on this mall in 1997 with over a million men and boys, promise keepers. And I know how to count people. And I don't have to take my shoes off to do it. And I'm telling you, there were a couple of thousand people here yesterday. Now, the media is not going to tell you that. They'll tell you a, a few dozen. But we're not going to fuss with the media. We are the media. I am OAS Media. We're broadcasting right now, live, around the world. Not just in Washington, D.C., but all over the world. Anywhere, anybody can pick up a laptop, a cell phone, a smartphone, an Android. Whatever you can get the media on, whatever you can pull down your email on, you can pull this prayer line down right now. It's 0800 for you military folks. For those of us that have been out for a while, it's 8 o'clock here in Washington, D.C. And uh, we're going to begin our prayer meeting every day, every day at 8 o'clock. We begin a prayer meeting here in our nation's capital, and it goes around the world. CNN's not going to tell you that. They're going to tell you you're a few handful of nuts from California, from West Virginia, from wherever you're from. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, every day at 8 o'clock, and before you leave here today, you ought to get one of my cards. It has the telephone number, and it has the access code. Any morning, any morning at 8 o'clock, you can call that prayer line, and somebody will be on there with you. It may just be you and somebody else. It may be you by yourself for a while. If you call in right at the top of the hour, you may get music playing. That means you're the only one on the line. But as soon as the second person calls in, the music stops. We do that every day. We've done it since the year 2000. So we're not newbies at this. A few months ago, I met a man by the name of Harry Riley. Never had met him before. Because I come to D.C. once a month, I had heard... He was a highly decorated military man, and having spent about two and a half years in Vietnam, I learned to appreciate the military, not only the one I was in, the U.S. Navy and Navy SEALs, but all the military and all the men and all the women that serve our great nation. And so when I called Colonel Riley, I said, Colonel, I understand your concerns, and I share them. I have the privilege to chair an organization here in this city, and it's called the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. I would encourage you, if you really give a rip about America, join us daily for prayer. Now, I know you all got busy schedules. And I know you're all terribly busy. And I know 8 o'clock in the morning is a busy time. But you could donate something to your nation. Many of you have donated your time. You've donated your money. You've come at your own expense, as I did. Nobody's paying my way. This came out of my pocket. My church didn't pay it. The Congressional Prayer Conference didn't pay it. Wiley Drake paid for Wiley Drake to come. That's why when I went down to Amtrak to get my ticket... I said, don't forget, I'm an old man. <laughs> Give me a senior discount. On Monday, the 12th, do we have people on the line? 
All right, we have somebody on the line with us right now. Let me get over here. Uh, do you, can you put it on speaker? We do this every morning. Uh, Bobby, you still there? Okay. Bobby, can you hear me? Yes, I can, very clearly. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bobby. Bobby, 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 where are you located? I'm in Southern California, uh, north of L.A., about 100 miles in Joshua Tree by the Joshua Tree National Park. All right. Thank you, Bobby. We're on the Washington Monument. The prayer line is open. Please continue to pray. We're going to be yakking our jaws here a little bit and uh, sharing with these folks, and then we're going to be praying as well. And uh, what I would like to have you guys do, if you would like, if you don't want to do this, don't feel, you know, pushed or anything. What I would like to do is have you, we're live on TV right now, going around the world. And uh, later, you can go back to the Whitey Drake Show dot com and see the archive because when I finish we'll post it it'll be up there for the whole world but I think it would be appropriate here on this first Saturday of OAS for some of you just to walk up here close to the camera and identify yourself and tell us what we should pray for anybody want to do that first volunteer come on up all right you're the first volunteer Tell, give us your name. Where are you from? Hi, my name is Chuck Leibov from Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore, Maryland. I'm going to be in Baltimore in June. I'm a Southern Baptist preacher, and we're going to have our meeting there in Baltimore in June. So God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. What should we pray for? Let's pray for all of our troops. Come home safely, and they all still fight for our freedom. We respect them every day. Amen. Amen. All right, folks. Anybody else want to come up here and share and pray? You don't have to pray. I, I know some of you pray in public. You may not be a big mouth preacher like me, uh, but some of you don't pray in public. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I want to give you an opportunity. Uh, this is a camera. This is live. We're, we're filming, and we're at the Washington Monument. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about a prayer meeting in a minute we had on the 30th day of April. All right, next prayer warrior. I'm Carrie Johnson. Good morning, Wiley. I'm from Temecula, California, and I'm here praying for the restoration of our republic. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on up. Y'all don't be bashful. You're already on camera. You might as well come close. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Drake. I'm Mickey Booth, and uh, I'm one of your prayer warriors Amen. from Oklahoma. And um, on uh, every Wednesday on your show, I used to do the birther report. I was the correspondent uh, of the uh, Obama's uh, porch document. And I'm going to pick that up again here in the near future. Amen. There's some things that are going to happen. There's big news breaking from Sheriff Arpaio's uh, investigation, and that's coming up. So I would be honored if you'd have me back on Wednesday to be uh, to give the, the report. Absolutely. You're always welcome. Mickey Booth, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, go to the website. You hear a lot of garbage, especially from the media, about Obama. First of all, let me say, the man that dwells in that White House, his name is not Barack Hussein Obama. We have absolute evidence and proof of that. His name is Barry Satoro. That was on his birth certificate. It's still on his birth certificate, the one that's real. All the other garbage is fake. And what Mickey was talking about is if you want to get a sheriff's kit put out by Arapayo and, and uh, Mike Volan and, and uh, a lot of other folks, Mickey participated in it. My attorney participated in it. Uh, the evidence is all there. All you got to do is get it. Go to the website. Where's Obama's birth certificate? And right now, Lord Jesus, we ask that the revelation of the truth about Barry Satoro, the illegal, ineligible president of the United States, would come out. And uh, so go to where's Obama's birth certificate uh, dot com. Free, won't cost you a dime. Just go online, download it. And you get it. And by the way, uh, I believe in uh, bumper stickers and 
signs, Operation American Spring, building the people's militia. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what I do. I'm a Baptist preacher. And I don't make a lot of money, but I do get a little money every once in a while in my pocket. And every time I get a few dollars in my pocket, $5, $10, $20, I put it all in $1 bills. And I've got a rubber stamp that says, where's Obama's birth certificate? And I stamp those dollar bills. So when I buy gasoline, when I buy food, when I give a homeless person a dollar on the street, guess what it says on the dollar? Where's Obama's birth certificate? You can get that rubber stamp, too. They're available. They're not very expensive. They're probably $8, $10. I don't know what they are. But you can get that rubber stamp. I got one in my briefcase right there. When I get my money, I just sit there when I got time and stamp them dollar bills. And uh, you go to Where's Obama's birth certificate, and you can get that rubber stamp to do that. You know what a great witness that is? That goes all over the world, wherever that dollar goes. We know where the dollar goes. It goes everywhere. It goes everywhere. Anybody else want to come up and lead us in prayer? I need some prayer, I need some prayer warriors here. I need somebody to come and pray. Come on up. I want to do it because it's Saturday to myself. Amen. Shabbat shalom, my brother. Shabbat shalom. To Shabbat you. shalom. I am a Southern Baptist pastor, but... Yeah. Every Friday night and Saturday night, we celebrate Shabbat Shalom. We are a Messianic Southern Baptist fellowship in California. Tell us who you are and where you're from. My name is Louis Winokur from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right, Louis, would you lead us in prayer, please? Uh, those of you that remove your hats, do so. Those of us that keep an eye on, do so. Uh, Lord God, thank you for bringing us to this. Thank you for the weather. Yes. I know folks are, some of the folks call it global warming, I call it God-made weather, uh, and keeping with the uh, Jewish literature, and then I'll do it in Hebrew, I'll do it in English, Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Elohim, Adonai, Echad, may the, God bless you, may the Lord watch over you and protect you, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one, Amen. Amen, Amen. Thank God bless you, you, my brother, God bless you. All right, folks, you don't have to be a rabbi or a preacher to pray. If you're a born-again Christian, if you love Jesus, you can pray. And if you'd like to come up here and pray out loud and share your prayer with the whole world. Listen, people say, well, I don't like to do it publicly. Well, then, you, then just read the Bible, because the Bible says let the redeemed. How many of y'all here have been redeemed from sin? Anybody here redeemed? The Bible talks about you, and they put you in the title of redeemed. And the Bible says, let, didn't say maybe, don't say hope so, could be, should be. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And so I want to ask one of my assistants and one of my helpers and a guy that travels with me, Jim McCullough, the hitchhiker. He hitchhikes all over the country. Do we have somebody on the prayer line? All right. Yes. Brother Jim McCullough. Lead us in prayer, will you please? Father God in heaven, we come before you recognizing you as our shepherd, that we shall not want. You make us to lie down in green pastures. You restore our souls. You lead us beside the still waters. You lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For thou art with us. Thou rod and thou staff, they comfort us. Thou preparest a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Thou anointest our heads will fall, our cups run over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Anybody else want to come and pray? I had to back up with the camera when Jim prayed. Otherwise, the guys at the studio start calling me saying, Hey, you're blowing our ears out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, please get a card from me. It has a telephone number and an access code on it. I'm not trying to sell you on anything but praying. Praying for America. I'll not send you anything. I'll not beg you for money. I don't ask for money. I pastor a local church in Southern California. And they provide a house for me, and they provide a little salary for me, for me to be able to eat. That's how I make my living. But 
I do a live internet television show, and I'm just egotistical enough to call it the Wiley Drake Show. But on my show, my show is on. Mickey Booth was a correspondent with us for a while. Then she got so busy, she she didn't come on, but she said she's coming back, and we're going to hold. She said that on nationwide, worldwide television, so we know we'll hold her to it. Let me tell you what we do on our show every day. Every day at 12 noon, we do a one-hour live broadcast. I have a guy call up every once in a while and say, Hi, my name is Charles Jones. And I sell insurance. He's an insurance salesman. And he said, I want you to know I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I'm an honest insurance salesman. And if you want to buy insurance, here's my telephone number. Here's how you can get in touch with me. Free advertisement. I have another guy that's a car dealer. A car dealer now. Everybody knows about car salesmen. Everybody. He comes on the line and says, hi, my name is Bill. And I'm a car salesman, and please don't turn it off. <laughs> but he said, I love Jesus, and I'm an honest car dealer. I'll give you a good deal, and I'll be honest with you. I won't cheat you. I'll have prayer with you, and I won't cheat you. And if you want to buy a car, come see me. I'm so, and he gives his address. I have a Mary Kay lady that comes on and advertises on my show. I have preachers that come on and say, hey, my name is Pastor Soldier. Listen, preacher, let me tell you something. You go out and buy advertisements to advertise for your church. See how much money you're going to spend. You come on my show Monday through Friday at 12 noon and 8 p.m. and do your own voiceover advertisement, and it won't cost you a dime. I don't care what your business is. If you love Jesus, we'll advertise for you. Now, a lot of you have heard something we've talked about here this morning a little bit, and I'll just do a little clarification. I am a born-again Christian, because when I was in Vietnam, I was scared I was going to die. And I realized that if I died, I'd go to hell. And I didn't want to go to hell. My mama told me about hell. My daddy had, and my preacher preached about it a little bit. And so I bowed my knee there on the carrier deck of a USS Kitty Hawk, and I prayed and invited Jesus in my heart and in my life, and I became born again, and I'm a born again Christian, and when I die, if I die, when I die, I'm going to heaven, not because I'm a preacher, not because I'm a Baptist, not because I'm active, but because I'm a born again Christian, and I hope you have that same hope, and I hope you have that same situation in your heart, but I learned in the Bible where it says if we're Christians, we're of the seed of Abraham. That's in Galatians chapter 3. If we are a Christian, we're a seed of Abraham. That's why we call ourselves Judeo-Christians. That's what this country was based on. Barry Satoro does not have a valid birth certificate, but this nation does. This nation's birth certificate is not the Constitution. I love the Constitution. I carry it in my pocket everywhere I go. I'm here because of the Constitution. But our birth certificate as a nation was the Mayflower Compact. The Mayflower Compact said three things. They came here for the glory of God. Amen. They said they came for the glory of God, for the advancement of the Christian faith, and for the establishment of a righteous body politic. That is our birth certificate. Read the Mayflower Compact. Now, folks, we're here to pray. we got the prayer line open. There's people on the uh, telephone line around the world. Uh, just got a guy from California uh, on, and uh, so we're praying. Anybody else want to come up and introduce yourself and pray? You don't have to introduce yourself. You just come up and pray. That's okay, too, whatever you want to do. The camera's open, folks. Go ahead. David Manning's pastor. He's the one that uh, you probably all know um, for his famous YouTube videos. He's a righteous pastor. He uh, uh, held a trial called the um, CIA Columbia trial, and that's how I first got to meet um, Dr. Wiley Drake here. And uh, this man is very humble. He probably has not told you that. Uh,
Pastor uh, Wiley uh, Drake's church in Buena Park, California. And um, this, uh, when he was released from prison, was it in January thereabouts? September of last year, Nakula, Nakula. Everybody, if you want to look up the story, you can read the story. It tells you more about him. Thank you, Mickey, for sharing that. Nakula Basila Nakula made a video. And they use that video as an excuse for the Benghazi affair. And even later, even Obama said that wasn't the fault of it. But they still put him in prison. And when the State Department needed a place for him to go, a halfway house, the Lord called me 25 years ago to take in the poor and the homeless. And we've been taking in poor and homeless. And this man was poor and homeless, so we took him in. This morning, he's just now uh, getting up there, but he, he, he lives and sleeps and eats at our church. Nakula Basila Nakula. And he's the man that produced that video that they blamed Benghazi on. Anybody else want to come up, introduce yourself or not, but we want you to come up and pray. We're live on TV. I'm only going to be on TV a little bit longer right now, uh, and then we'll just continue with our phone conversation and our prayer. Anybody want to come up and introduce yourself? Where you're from, why you're here, what you think we ought to do. Hey, I don't know about y'all, but listen, I'm the chaplain for OAS, and uh, I know the colonel personally, okay? And I've been working with him for some time now. But uh, he would tell you, and I'll tell you, we're not sure what we're going to do. But we know we're going to do something. We're here, and we're fed up, and we've had enough. And we're going to change. Somebody asked me the other day, why do you call it Operation American Spring? Well, some time ago, a group of Coptic Christians in Cairo... Their wives and daughters were being brutally murdered and sexually molested, even their little boys by the Muslims, the Muslim Brotherhood, who Barry Satoro so proud to be a member of. And they said, enough is enough. We're going to take our government back. They went to the streets of Cairo and went out in the streets, and they took their government back. They made one mistake. They went in with knives and guns, people died. That's why we're not here with knives and guns. That's why we're not here armed except with the Constitution and the Bible. We're here on a peaceable mission. But as peaceful as it is, we ain't playing, folks. We ain't playing. We will replace those illegal aliens in the White House, and we will get our government back on target. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Anybody want to come up and introduce yourself on television, come on up. I'm only going to be on about five more minutes, so hurry up. These cell phone batteries only last so long. Come on up. We want you to come up and introduce yourself. You don't have to pray. Just come up and tell us who you are and where you're from. All right, sir. If I can talk, my name is John Lackey. I'm from Brantford, Florida. I'm uh, proud to be an American. Amen. And uh, I love the Jesus Christ, and uh, I hope he'll save me. He's the one that's in charge of my salvation, not me. Amen. And uh, I just pray that uh, he'll do that for all of us here. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear brother. God bless you. Anybody else want to come up? Like I said, you can just come up and introduce yourself. Share your prayer request, whatever you'd like to share. This is open, folks. Hey, we're the real media. The Wiley Drake Show is the real media, the new media. If CNN or ABC or CBS or all these others here, they they'd get you aside and say, "Well, can 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 would you be interviewed?" And we want you to say this, and we want you to say that. I'm telling you, folks, this is a worldwide camera going all over the world. All you got to do is walk up here, just like this guy did. I didn't tell him what to say, and I'm not going to tell you what to say. 
And when I go off the air here in a few minutes, if any of you would like a business card, I got two cards. I got a card for the TV show and a card for the prayer line. Brother Sylvester Bland, would you make your way over here, please? Y'all know I'm from California. This is my boss from California. <laughs> this is my pastor. This is my buddy. This is my brother. This is my prayer warrior, Sylvester Bland, who pastors a church in California and who is a director of OAS in California. Pastor Bland, uh, would you lead us in prayer, please? Well, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for no rain at all today. And I pray that uh, the rain cleans and refreshes us. But we pray, Lord, today that you would R-E-I-G-N, rain in our hearts today. Yes, Lord. That you would uh, order our footsteps, <clears throat> our hands and our feet, our mouths, our, 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 our whole being, because the world is watching even though we may not have cameras, we have the eye of our Heavenly Father. Yes. Down from heaven. And I do know, Lord God, that you are using us like a Gideon's army. People who are dedicated to the cause. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. Amen. And I pray, Father God, that as we pray and stay the darkness away, you ultimately will get the victory. Because we are your people who come here today to humble ourselves and to stand for what we know you want this country to be. So, Father, we thank you again. May we be, continue to be that, that, shine, that shining city on the hill, the jewel crown of, of, of America, right here in the heart of, of, of the United States of America, Washington, D.C. And it's a small group of ragtag, uh, of Bible-believing people that took a stand in the last of the last days and said no more. And so, Father, we thank you for giving us internal strength for eternal hope in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Pastor Sylvester Bland, thank you so much. And you know what I say about him all the time on television. I say, this is a bland pastor that is not bland. His name is bland, but he ain't bland. He's on fire for Jesus. All right, anybody else? My name is John Markson, and I'm from uh, Clayton County, Georgia. And I wish you would do me a favor. Can you pan that camera over to those young people that just arrived here? They're on camera. I hope that enough people in the election booth this November start setting the record straight on who they elect Amen. so that the future of those children is what their future is this time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Hi, my name is Ron Daly. I'm from the west side of Indianapolis. Non-leadership that we have right now because they're uh, they're destroying America, and I think it's time to somebody stands up and takes action, takes our country back before it's too late. service, so if uh, you can sing, uh, amen, we have some patriotic songs we're going to do tomorrow, uh, so if you if you'd like to be a part of the organization of the prayer, uh, the, the Sunday service, uh, meet me at 9 there for the Lincoln Memorial, uh, and the service starts in August uh, at 10, and you can text and chat with all your Facebook friends, tweet them, because we will be broadcasting that live as well. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're, we're gonna turn this place around. We're, you know, one Amen. Soul at a time. Amen. Amen. So Amen. You know. All right, ten o'clock Lincoln Memorial tomorrow. All right, anybody else want to come up before we go off? Introduce yourself. Make any comment you'd like to make, ladies and gentlemen. This is the real news media. I'm a real newsman. I cover the news worldwide. I don't taint it. I have my own opinion. 
but I'll let you share yours. Yes, ma'am. Who are you and where are you from? I'm Yinzer from Pittsburgh, and I just want to say Satan needs millions to get his job done, but God only needs a few. That's right. And he called a lot of people, but these are the ones that showed, and I'm just humbled and honored to be here with everyone that actually came. Amen. When so many said they would. Amen. Amen. So, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Anybody else? Who you are and where are you from? My name is Bob Hagen out of Indianapolis, Indiana. And I just want to pray that the American people across this country wake up to what's Amen. going on in this country, to this tyrannical government. I pray for all the military across this world that are in harm's way and their families. Just people need to wake up and see what's going on. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right, folks. Anybody else? We'll give you a last chance. Come up and introduce yourself. Make any comment you'd like to make. This is the real meeting. These other guys will show up here with a big old camera and a big old bag and a big old bunch of BS. Yeah. We don't have a big camera, but this is going worldwide. Yes, ma'am. Tell us who you are and where you're from. Hello, I'm Lisa O'Neill, and I come from the belly of the beast in New York City, man. Amen. I was in New York. In fact, let me share something with you about New York, and I'm going to close this program with this today about New York. Many of you don't know this story, but I'm going to tell it. April the 30th, 1789, this country was being established. The leaders said, we need a constitution, and they established the constitution. That's what we're under now. They inaugurated on April the 30th, 1789, George Washington as the first president of the United States. And it was in the Capitol building of the United States of America on 26 Wall Street at the Federal Building. Our Capitol then, at the beginning, was in New York, in the belly of the beast. Here's what happened on April the 30th at 12 noon. George Washington was inaugurated as our first president. He walked down the steps of 26 Wall Street to Wall Street, walked over to Broadway, but before he walked, he grabbed a congressman by the hand and a senator by the hand. The first Congress and the first Senate was about to be seated. The first. He grabbed them by the hand and said, if we're going to do this, it's got to be done in prayer. And so he led those men that had just inaugurated him as president over to Broadway. They walked up Broadway to 209 Broadway to St. Paul's Chapel. They walked in the church, in the church. Not in the federal building, but in the church. George Washington walked up, leaned over and kissed the Bible, turned around with his back to the altar, and declared the first Congress of the United States is convened. And it was convened in church, not in the Capitol building. And it was convened in prayer. And that was the first congressional prayer conference of the United States of America. It is my privilege to serve as the chairman of the current Congressional Prayer Conference of the United States of America. And that's why I said a while ago, every day, every day, Monday through Friday. Now, we meet on Saturday and Sunday, but we meet later. But every day, Monday through Friday, the Congressional Prayer Conference that George Washington started back in 1789 began in New York City at our capital there. Now, later, our capital came here. But if you'd like to join that congressional prayer meeting, it doesn't cost anything to join. We don't send you anything except emails once in a while. But the bottom line is I am the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference. My co-chairman is a man by the name of Clyde Rivers. He is the ambassador from the African country of Burundi. He is the co-chairman. If you'd like to be a deputy prayer warrior for the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., 
All you got to do is send me an email and say, I want to be a deputy prayer warrior, and we'll take your word for it. And then you can put on your business card, you can put on your ministry sheet, I'm a deputy prayer warrior of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. And I'm the chairman of the commission, and I'll appoint you as a deputy prayer warrior. And I won't bug you, I won't ask you for money, uh, but we do want deputy prayer warriors all over the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're doing a live broadcast here at a live prayer meeting, the live meeting on Saturday of Operation American Spring. These are men, women, boys and girls that have come out to say enough is enough. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please pray for these folk as they're here. We started the day off yesterday in the rain. Praise God we prayed and God asked God to uh, stop the rain and he did. And uh, we forgot to ask him about this wind, though. <laughs> Anything else from New York? Uh, no, other than now is not a time for fear or complacency. Amen. Uh, we're in a fight against tyranny, and um, God bless America. And how do we get that information? I'll give you a card here in just a minute. Let me finish up and go off the air, and then we'll take care of that. Now, like I said, I pastor a church in California. But a number of years ago, I joined a church in New York, in Harlem. Atla World Missionary Church is my church home. James David Manning is the pastor of that church, and he's my pastor. And after I was there for a while, being a typical pastor, he said, we need another pastor at this church. Would you become an assistant pastor? So I'm also an assistant pastor at Atla Worldwide Missionary Church there in Harlem. I was just in Harlem uh, on the 30th because we were there celebrating. <clears throat> on April the 30th, that same day for George Washington, I stood in the federal building where he was inaugurated, and we walked the walk that George walked. We walked down to Wall Street over to Broadway, and up to St. Paul's Chapel. Now listen, you think God's not in this thing? <clears throat> when the Muslim Brotherhood attacked America and killed over 3,000 people on 9-11, they destroyed the symbol of our finances. They destroyed the symbol of our country. But there was a little, another symbol at Ground Zero that did not get destroyed. That was St. Paul's Chapel, where George initiated this country. God said, you can destroy those towers. You can kill 3,000 people, but you cannot, you cannot touch my church. In fact, in the upstairs part of that church, I was there just a week ago, the windows upstairs are old-fashioned, thin, pane glass. Not even one of those windows was cracked during 911. In fact, that church became a hospital. That church became a rescue mission. That church took care of firemen. It fed firemen. They slept on the pews in that church. You get a chance to go to New York, go to St. Paul's Chapel. It'll bless your heart. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Wiley Drake. We're signing off. God bless you. Have a great day. As soon as I push the off button, publish this, YouTube it, and put it everywhere. They'll let us put it up.